What is the best way to convince someone to put on tefillin? In general, when a Jew does a mitzvah, he's connecting his essence, his soul to Hashem. And in truth, in by the very, if we can call it DNA, in the very existence of a Jew's soul, he has that desire and that will to be connected. And so therefore, firstly, better than any discussions and any arguments and intellectual explanations, if one can get the person to try it, first do it and try it once, then that's something which is going to have the strongest possible effect on the continuation and I'm doing it again. And the way to get him to, to do it just once is firstly, tell him just do it once, just do it. First do it and you'll see that you like it. Because the minute a Jew does a mitzvah, he's bringing out of himself that connection and he's constantly going to his thirst and want more. And that's the most important thing. Action speaks much stronger than any type of intellectual thing because intellectual ideas and discussions are all limited. Action is the most, the strongest possible power which is beyond limitation. And if the person doesn't want to do it, the strongest way to get him to do it is with this idea himself, itself to try and bring out his soul. You're a Jew. And a Jew puts on film. A Jew, his entire being is to want to be connected to Hashem. The famous story was Reb Mendel Futafas when he didn't know how to say it in English and he turned to the person sitting next to him and he says, I Jew, you Jew, I Tfilin, you Tfilin. And that worked better than any scholarly debate and scholarly discussion that there is. We find that idea also, the Friedrich Rebbe says that a lot of times in order to get a Jew to reconnect his roots is speak to him about his parents, his grandparents, speak to him about his source, his roots. Because a Jew, once you talk to him about his parents and grandparents, about his roots, he right away remembers what he's all about and why he wants to be connected to that reality of these roots. Um, the Friedrich Rebbe also said about once how he, how he explained it to a person after describing the roots of Friedrich Rebbe talks about a person who came to him when he was in America, and this was a person who wasn't keeping kosher, wasn't keeping tefillin, tarasa mishpacha, nothing. And he came to Friedrich Rebbe for a different, for a side, for something, a discussion that he had to have with him. And Friedrich Rebbe said, I brought the discussion to start talking about the old shtetl and how things used to be and where he comes from, his father and his grandfather, because that is guaranteed to first wake him up. And then the Friedrich Rebbe says, I explained to him, I told him the following line. Inside the heart of every Jew, there is a Beis HaMikdash, a place where Hashem rests His presence. In this Beis HaMikdash, there is a Kodesh HaKadoshim, a Holy of Holies. The Kodesh HaKadoshim is the place where there is an Arin, the Holy Ark, and that's where Hashem's presence is. And the Friedrich Rebbe went on to explain to this person. He says, you can call it what you want. I'll call it Hashem. You can call it anything. But what it means is something that's beyond my existence that's here, which is only about eating and drinking and sleeping like an animal, but that there must be a deeper purpose, a higher purpose, and that's what we're calling God. And if you want, you can call it something else. That's the Kodesh HaKadoshim, that's the Holy of the Holies, the deeper purpose, the deeper meaning, something which is beyond just my physical material life. And then, in addition to that, what one person has is inside this Holy Beis HaMikdash, there's also a Mizbeach. And the Mizbeach means we have to sacrifice something, we have to give something away for this higher and deeper purpose, which is higher than the regular, just physical, mundane world that we live in. The Fidika Rebbe tells how that was it, that was what he told him. This person um, was an older person already, and a few months later, Fidika Rebbe said he met the children of this person. And they said this person had passed away. But ever since his conversations with Fidika Rebbe, he started keeping tefillin and kosher, he started becoming back closer to his Yiddishkeit because of the realization that there's a higher purpose and that I have to give something for it. And finally, one final 
um, story is that the Rebbe one time told someone that if you'll tell someone that there's a Jew in New York who speaks, who, who's never seen you and he doesn't know you, and he speaks Russian with a, he speaks English with a Russian accent, and he is asking, he is interested and wants that you should wear tefillin and keep kosher and keep Shabbos. I'm not sure exactly what the, but that, that was the basic point of it. And uh, then for sure he'll put on tefillin. And so someone came to the Rebbe and he said, I said it to the person and he didn't do it. So the Rebbe said, and did you tell him he speaks English with a Russian accent? Did you put in that part? He said, no, I didn't. The Rebbe said, go back and say that part, he'll do it. And I remember Bedidi Avovda, remember we were in Venice and there, were, there was a Sergeant Fisher, Tzvi Fisher, he used to fabring about this all the time, he used to tell over this story. How he knew the guy, he went to the castle, whatever it was. And I remember one of the Bachrim used to go on with time to a certain store where they never wanted to do anything. There was a store where there was quite a few Jews, the owner was Jewish and there was other Jews. They told him you can't come. They didn't want him to come in. They didn't want him to talk to the guys. Nothing. So he came in there once and he told them, "I want to tell you something." And he said these words: "He's a Jew in New York who speaks English with a Russian accent, and he wants you to put on. He never, he, he never met you. He never saw you, and he wants you to keep kosher, put on tefillin, keep Shabbos." Immediately the guy rolled up. This is a, a, a story. The Bachar came back and told immediately the guy who never won. He rolled up his sleeve, and since then every single time they came to the store, he got the, all the people in his store to to put on film. He actually would push all the people in his store to put on film. <laughs>